Welcome back to another episode. Hey. <laughs> we literally just finished the last one. Um, if you didn't see the last one, jump on and check it out. Oh, I reckon it was a cracker of a day. It was one of those days that we didn't expect to be that good because the weather was so bad, but the fishing was Crazy, crazy what you see up here, Cape York. So we're in Cape York, far north Queensland, um, northern Australia for your international viewers. It's the wet season, so it's wild and unpredictable. Um, and we're in an area that we need to really keep an eye on the weather to make sure the rivers don't come up and we, we, we don't get stuck in here. If the rivers come up, we can't get back out. So we're um, constantly on edge and, you know, making plans. Our plans are changing sort of like throughout the day to suit the weather. Um, so as you can see today, there's a bit of a southerly blowing, but we're going to go anyway. We're going to punch south and we've heard on the grapevine that there's a, there's a reef that's out of the green zone and it's meant to hold some pretty good fish. So it's a bit closer to the coast. We're not going 30 kilometers to sea. And it's not as windy as yesterday. Yeah. Like at this stage yesterday, it was like already white capping. Yeah. And uh, at the moment now, it's looking pretty good. Hit the mud there. What are you in? Nothing. No, it's not picking up. It's super shallow. So yeah, it's pretty miserable out here, but we're gonna hug the coast up here and right down where we're going, where that point is, it might be a little bit protected from the southeast. I'll get up the front, mate. Um, which would be really nice. And I just said to Dane, who cares? Like the weather's, the wind's crap, but we're gonna explore all of this and um, tuck in all the creeks. We're just gonna deal with the midges. So yeah, let's get into it. Ah, that was a long haul. How's that land? Have a go of this place. How good's this? It's been so windy, and then to find a little sanctuary like this is just epic. This is what you need. You need these marine park zoning maps. Get the right one for the right area where you're exploring because um, you've got to be all over where you can and can't fish or collect crabs or do whatever you want to do. In close, we're allowed to chase, chase mud crabs or flick the mangroves and that kind of thing and catch fish. We're just not allowed to be out here fishing or any further out. So that's what we're thinking a bit later. Um, we still want to head around the point here and explore and sort of, I don't know, find this reef and see what fish we can catch, get some good reef fish. Um, and then come back here, the tide's going to drop out, come back here and chase mud crabs and, I don't know, just have a walk through the rocks and the mangroves. You guys know how much we love doing that and see what we can find. But I might send the drone up now and show you guys this beautiful coastline um, while Dane ties all the lures on and the yeah. plastic <laughs> and um, gets us ready for a... Lol for a crazy fishing session. We don't want to be doing anything out there where we're rocking around and, hey, like yesterday, trying to do stuff in that swell, broadside to swell, it's just not on. It's nuts. Yeah. We just do the one lure thing. Yeah. I'm going out of here, I think it's going to be, it's going to be pretty wild. Yeah, it's going to be wild. It'd be nice to have a few drops, say, with plastics. Yeah. But yeah. we might have to have one person fishing and one person sort of keeping the bow into the into the wind and the swell. Yeah. Because there's a fair bit of swell pushing around here. But it's, it's just nice to know that we got this back up, like this little sanctuary in here is gonna be so much fun later. And then the river's on the way back. Uh, we got a bit of tide moving today. We got about 800 mils, so we might catch some fish in the rivers. jig on this uh, samurai what's at the runoff we got a trolling lure Dane's favorite lure he's ready to lose that soft plastic on the samurai extractor
there, brother. All right, <laughs> just realized I wasn't recording. Um, look at the size of this oyster we just picked up. Look at this, look, look, two, two little black tips. We've walked 15, 20 meters and we've got some tucker here. So this is what we're doing today, guys. We're chasing tucker. We got bloody, we had to give up from being out there at sea. It was too wild. Oh, look at this. Oh my god! Get that muscle on that side there. Whoa! Holy hell, he's huge! Oh my god, that is by far the <laughs> biggest oyster I've ever seen. What the f Are we gonna collect some of these or what? <laughs> oh my god! Mate, that's massive, that thing. Look at that. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh, that thing was massive hope. That's a ripper. Absolute ripper. So what I was saying when I wasn't actually recording is crocodiles. They're the masters of disguise. We've been, yesterday we went 30 kilometers out to sea and we, we found two crocodiles, one on a close in island and one on an island 30 kilometers out. And the one on the, the island 30 kilometers out, the big island, was um, a bigger crocodile and he disappeared into knee deep water, crystal clear in, in like a split second and we couldn't find him. And I sent the drone up, could not find him. So. That's why we have to be really cautious in, in, in sort of habitats like this, which is their natural habitat. They just blend in so well. So, you know, you'll see it's been really cautious. That's why we've got to stick together. Don't have your back to the water, or, you know, as much as you can. Um, but at the same time, don't let it ruin your, your time. You want, you don't want to be scared. You've got to enjoy it here. Just need one silly mud crab, eh? That's like roaming, ar roaming around. Yeah. I'm thinking the rocks up here. Yeah. Another big oyster. Really? Yeah. Huge, huge one here. Just in case. I was crocky, didn't know we were here already. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> They're everywhere, these things. Oh, look at that one. I'll just wipe the lens. Oh, and he's feeding too. Yeah. He's open. Look at this one. Another shark. Look at that one. There you go, he's closed. All right, we might go and knock these off. Get some energy. Oh, a stingray. How cool is he? Oh, wow. <laughs> Shark. Another huge oyster. Really? Whoa, that could be even the biggest yet. <laughs> They're getting bigger and bigger. Look at that thing. They're hard to eat when they're that big. <laughs> Need a knife and fork. Where'd that one go that I threw? Oh, I oh, did you? You probably have to clean him. Could be a shell in there. He's huge, it's a mouthful. 
<laughs> so salty. So salty, mm. eh? Wow, it's literally a mouthful. I'm not gonna lie, I definitely prefer oysters cooked. But that is yummy. That's the whole oyster. No way. Yep. That's bigger than your hand. Yep. God. Man, that's, that's down to my wrist. You gonna crack it? Slope it down? I'm gonna. <laughs> It's gonna be pretty wild, this one. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Oh my god. Give us a fish photo. <laughs> Bring the tail around. Yep, that, yeah, that's it. Nice. <laughs> what the hell? Look at, that's huge, man. How good is this place? I wonder what you pay. What do you pay for oysters? Like in Sydney or something, oh, on Brisbane. Yeah. Or Cairns. 30, 35 bucks, 40 bucks a dozen. Really? Yeah. That's half a dozen normal oysters. <laughs> yeah, true. That That's true. That thing would be bloody 60 bucks. Yeah. Jeez, uh, I love Cape York. I love Northern Australia. There's just, it's like going back in time. The wildlife is wild. The food is abundant. It's epic. What is this thing? Look at this. That's like off an old ship, like cogs or something. Whoa. Oh, is that an, a drum brake? Surely not. No, I reckon that's off an old ship. <laughs> So apparently there's a shipwreck too, which is not a ship, like a boat wreck, about halfway back to camp. And if the tide allows, we'll um, stop in there on the way back and check it out. Apparently it's loaded with oysters. So we'll check that out and show you guys that too. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. That's insane. I didn't know they made them that big. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, you wouldn't go hungry here. If you want big oysters, come here to Spot X in uh, Cape York, far north Queensland. I gotta eat it now. Let's watch him slurp this down. I love oysters, but that's that's a big oyster. A massive oyster. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, you gotta chew it. Mm. <laughs> you gotta bite it in half. He's salty. Is it good? You like it? Do you prefer him cooked or whatever? I prefer him natural and a little bit smaller. Do ya? Less sweeter or something when they're smaller. Depends where you get them from. Jeez, you're fussy, aren't you? They're too big for Dane. <laughs> Let's be honest, do you prefer mud shell or oysters? Mmm. Compared to mud shell compared to that oyster, it's probably mud shell. Mm. It's a complete different taste, eh? Yeah. It doesn't have that kind of bitterness, it's like a... Well, that's just really oceany, mm. those ones. Yeah. Three bite oysters. Three bite oysters. You know what else is big and aggressive around here? Midges. <laughs> they get stuck in your ears, it's so annoying. Shovel nose shark. Another shovel nose. Oh, he's tiny. He's so small. 
Well, it's looking pretty quiet on the mud crab front. Not seeing much at all, except for stingrays and oysters. Which is strange, it looks like it would be really good. Just check around these mangroves here. And the mangroves in here behind me, and then we might get back in the boat. And... Well, something's moving out there, is that a shark? Hopefully it's a shark. See the swirl? Yeah. Shark, eh? I know. Yeah. What's, what are you seeing? All these little tiny crabs keep coming out of these things. <laughs> Big stingray there. With the stingrays, I just find you give them space, they're just going to go around you, no worries. Look at this oyster. Look at that one. Oh, there's another one in there, look at that. He's watching. Bloody mud crabs this trip. Just can't seem to find one. It's such a different trip to our normal trip, you know, where we can Catch muddies and catch barra. Big oyster. Things alive, they just closed up. Never seen oysters like this. I trade them all for one mud crab. We gotta call it. No muddies or we're gonna miss out on the tide. Yep, I reckon too. It's a shame. Alright, we're gonna get up to the high tide mark mark and just hightail back to the boat. Get out of here. Oh well, we gotta feed it oysters. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll go to the front. Right. Yeah, I think through here. It's super shallow in here, this whole bay. That's why I thought it'd be good for muddies. Anyway. Yeah, how good is this for? All these fallen mangroves. Little island in the middle here. Oh, what a find. Ah, oh, it looks unreal. A couple of deep snags over there, I reckon. Yeah. Hey, this looks unbelievable. This looks great, Even eh? over there, that looks pretty shallow, but that looks good. Wow. The sand is right there. I've never seen anything like this. Look at the carnage in oh, here. Man. Where's yours? That screams fish. Oh, and it's deep here. This is epic. We've missed the tide, but it's still, I reckon we're, I still think we're gonna catch fish. I can't believe that. When the water gets up a bit, we can fish in there. What? This is special. This is special. This is why we come to these places for creeks like this. Alright, let's get some lures in the water. What do you got on there, buddy? What's your jack lure? I got my favourite cod lure on. Oh, yeah. They, they are effective on cod, aren't they? Alright, 
behind in order. Yep. On! Yep. Oh, me too! <laughs> oh, I got a tremor though. What do you got? Tremor. <laughs> double tremors. We had to double up on tremors yesterday. It was a bit different, wasn't it? <laughs> Catching those guys because they just wreck things. Bloody Trevor's, I can see him. You can see him. Yeah, just schooling around it. Oh, did he? Oh, lucky, lucky. Yep. Another Trevor. Yes, another Trevor. <laughs> he stitched us up. He sent us into Trevor Creek. Get up on the timber. That looks sick in there. Yeah. Really? Yep. How can we hold ourselves here? Alright, well this isn't kicking off the way we thought it would. It's loaded with trevally, tiny little trevally, which is super frustrating because you just can't get your lure back to the boat without getting hit. But we've just found this bit in here. Look at the carnage through here. We're just saying it might be from a cyclone or something, but we're going to tie the boat off. Pain spotting jacks, mangrove jacks. A mangrove jack. Yeah. Tiny little jack, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, so they love all these mangrove buttresses, so we're going to go for a bit of a walk, super shallow, but we'll just climb around on the mangroves and flick some lures around. Hopefully it doesn't rain, looks like it's going to rain. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, they're really different colour in the water. Oh, what's behind him? There's a barra. That's a barra, 45 centimetre barra, right dirt. there with the jack. Now we can't target them because it's closed season, but if we could, I would have flicked the lure as quick as I said barra then. So we could tie to them nah, more Oh yeah. Okay. He's got me under. What is it? Oh no, I'm gonna have to go in there. What is it? He's buried me. Can you keep an eye out? Can you keep an eye out? First, first cast in there. Oh, it's a cod. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I can only see half of him. He's got me in a hole. He's not tiny. Oh, look at that. Can you keep an eye out, mate? I'm a bit spooked here. Come on, get out. Don't like this, eh? Not bad. Could be lunch. Oh, couple of hundred mil of water. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Ah. Codfather. <laughs> Codfather. Sick.
That sounded like a barra. He stayed. He didn't come. He didn't come past that. Yeah. Yeah, just went in. Bit of a dip. Yep. Oh, that was a jack, bro. No way. Oh, you hit so hard. Hit hard, buried me, got him out and pulled hooks. Oh. Dark red too. Hey? A dark red one. Oh, nice. <laughs> Man. Yeah, what do you got? Yeah, buddy. Huge turtle. Big turtle. Please, they're fast when they want to be. Like I said before, we're going to make beer battered oysters that look like they've shrunk. I thought they were huge. They are huge. They are still pretty big. You can pull them out, they're pretty big. Yeah, okay. Actually, I'll show you guys one. Beer battered oysters. We're gonna deep fry these guys in a beer batter, um, which is gonna be self raising flour and Great Northern. Uh, mashed potato, which I'll whip together now. So we'll just chop these up quickly and put them in some. Actually, I've got some water happening. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna boil this on the jet boil. It was pretty sick seeing all those jacks in the yeah in the mangroves and stuff just free swimming around too. That was pretty good. And like how their how their colours change. Yeah, they're real light. They and were clear. Hey? super Cause... light with like red with like a red fringe on them. Yeah, like hard to tell if you didn't know the shape of them. Yeah, just going by the colour, you wouldn't what say they, they were. were jacks. Yeah. So I mean, that was I still enjoyed that. Yeah, same. Climbing around the mangroves there, and we spotted. Um, we caught a couple of cod, we spotted mangrove jack, we spotted barramundi, but just, and it was really shallow, it wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Yeah, it's disappointing, but I've never seen oysters that big before. No, that so was that's probably my sick. highlight. Yeah. They're the biggest oysters I've ever seen. These guys here, yeah. they don't look big, but we'll show you the footage now. They were like, well one of them was longer than Dane's hand as he held it. It was massive. Alright, beer batter. We're going to go self-raising flour. It's got to be self-raising. That'll do. And then ah, warm beer. Um, I'm going to make a fair bit of this because we've got Spanish mackerel. We've got a fair bit of it from yesterday. 
actually no, we're going to do shark mackerel. We'll leave the Spanish. Um, so shark mackerel, and we're going to cut them into little cubes, and we might as well make enough for tomorrow, hey, for lunch. Oh yeah, for sure. That'd be that'd be good. So we'll do mashed potato with butter. Maybe a bit of cheese. Cheese. Is that allowed? It's not allowed at home, so. <laughs> so it's allowed out here. Hey, you're cooking. Do what you want. All right. So next we're going to do. I'll get the fish out out of the companion. This thing's an absolute weapon. So it sits all, you can sit it all night. Like when we do trips out in the boat, we take it and you unplug it and it will run for 16 hours in a lithium battery that's built in. And then um, during the day, you just plug it back in and it draws stuff all. It's a really good fridge, good size, it's 60 litres and it's really hardy. And we've got a lot of shark mackerel there. So next, we're gonna cut up this fish into little cubes. So close. We've got to take the skin off first. Oh, well, let's see how he goes. We everyone can judge him. Give him a star rating out of ten. Oh. It's not a good start. Oh. What's happening over that side? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh. Right, I flip it. Oh, it's pretty good. Not too bad. Pretty good. Put that there to keep the flies happy. Now we'll take out the bloodline, which gets rid of the bones. Looks like a waste, but you don't want to eat that anyway. Dane likes to leave that in, just for a <laughs> bit of extra crunch. That <laughs> happened three times, no, no. <laughs> Three from three. <laughs> and we're going to cut these into cubes. I know we're grubs, it looks really grubby, but I promise I wiped down the table first and then just chuck these straight in. I don't put any salt or pepper in the mix. I like to, once it comes out, lather it in salt. All right, I washed my hands before I did this, I think. <laughs> That's not... Yikes. It's not dangerous at all. Yeah, super windy. We can't get away from the wind, can we, mate? Nope. We had um, what, a good four or five days at the start of the trip. It was just beautiful. Stuff all wind. We slept out at the Great Barrier Reef. We slept on islands. So if you haven't seen those episodes, jump back and watch them because it, oh, it was absolutely glamour. That, for me, was the highlight of the trip so far. I'll just get the kitchen hand to clean this up later and that. Before he goes to bed. So we're using rice bran oil. And I'm gonna put heaps in there. We're using rice bran oil because apparently, actually one of you guys on YouTube told me about it, I think a chef, because uh, it's not carcinogenic when it gets hot, whereas olive oil and that gets a bit nasty, it's not good for you. So apparently rice bran oil is the way to go. And it's been tasting really good. It hasn't really changed the taste of the popcorn fish that we do. All right, guys, that oil looks just about hot enough to drop our entree in. So we're gonna have the deep fried, beer battered oysters for entree. Um, I'm just gonna drop a little bit of batter in there and see if it bubbles up. Yeah, that'll do. Here we go, let's get them in. So Dane thinks we should drop a little bit of flour. Oh mate, they're already just bubbling up. Oh, a little bit of batter on top, not flour. Oh, this is... I don't know, it's looking amazing. How long do you reckon? Like 20 seconds? Yeah, maybe. It's pretty big. We, we definitely want to cook these ones. Yeah. Oh, yes, we've got heaps of fish here too. This is going to be delicious. We've got a plate ready. Plate, bit of paper towel. Good. 
That smell good. Sea bat is beautiful, eh? Especially with this great northern. It's really good. In my opinion. So I've heard that you should only use alcohol to cook, like red wine and white wine and beer and all that stuff. You should only use what you like to drink. Oh really? Yeah. So it's used the same quality as what you like to drink in the food. In the cooking. Yeah, in the cooking. I reckon these are ready. Do you want to go? Yeah. Oh, they look like a man too. No, do I? Alright, let's take them out. How good does this look? I'm not even going to do the other side. I'm just going to load up this side. The rocks in the bay, a little bit more salt because they're not, not salty enough. The rocks in the bay today, giant bloody oysters to the dinner plate. That look good. Cheers mate. Cheers. It's a big day. Mmm. Yep. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> Yeah, mm. I definitely prefer that to uncooked. Trout rocks. Prefer that to eating three bite oysters out of the size. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, you that thing what? was a weapon. I reckon I prefer it too. What can we dip them in? What can we dip it in, guys? Let us know. Um, we got sweet chili there. Hmm. That could be good. Or an aioli would be good. Like kupi would be good. Kupi would be pretty good. We could actually whip up an aioli. Kupi with some garlic. For one dip. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> You're always getting carried away. Carried away. Let's, let's make a, <laughs> like a 10 part sauce. For a two just bite. give us 20 minutes. We're just going to whip something up. <laughs> well, we've got, we do have a. Yeah, I love how you get passionate about it. And look, he's left the biggest one for me. Mm. Oh man, that's so good. We could have got like 50 of these today. Yeah. There was that many down there. But we were like, no, we're going to go get a local jack. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave the oysters for someone else who yeah. can't fish. Yeah, it turns out we can't fish. <laughs> and, um, not my right yeah, they are delicious. They're good, man. You guys should try this at home. The heat's better than the than the um, straight off the rock. Yeah. Just sea salt. All that was was just sea salt and snot. <laughs> sea salt and snot. <laughs> you just got to add a bit of Great Northern mm. and a bit more salt, Himalayan salt, and it's delicious. Yeah. Mm. That was good. That was really good. Oh. They're super soft, so I reckon I could chuck the fish on. I reckon we got... Yeah, boy. I reckon we got plenty here for lunch tomorrow, too. Which is going to be so nice and easy. We could even put it on some wraps. I haven't had fish wraps in a while. Pretty good. Oh. I reckon we just pour this straight onto the plates. You're right, isn't it? Yeah. That's what they feed old people in the palliative care home. Sometimes Mel, my wife, makes mashed potato and it like this, and I'm like, babe, it's just too runny. And then she leaves it with chunks, and I'm like, babe, it's too many chunks. <laughs> She's like, there's a fluff. There's a fluff line. Yeah, there is. There is. I'm dancing around because the March flies are smashing my feet. We're just going to serve up some. Fish on the side. Dane and I will both have our vegetables after. Probably when the, when the cameras turn off, mm. we'll just cook up some more veggies. Yeah. And that's it. Oh, yeah. That is it. Let's have a taste test. Really? So good. Yeah. It's so cheesy and delicious. 
Oh man. Oh. Good eh? Hot. Mm. All right, that's a wrap. That is good. Hang on, let's check our microphones because we did this the other night. I'm good. I'm off. Zane's off. <laughs> Mine will pick you up. That's a wrap for another episode. Absolute cracker up here in Cape York. We brained the fishing today <laughs> and the crabs and well, you guys saw it. Um, best part of today for me was probably the oyster hunt. Finding the biggest oysters I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I'd have to agree. And just being here, experiencing this place. So stoked we got to come into here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being a part of our adventure and making all this kind of dream become a reality. It's epic. I'm loving it. Um, we'll see you on the next episode, I reckon. Woo. See you later. I don't mind the puree. Me too. Especially with a fish like that. Yeah. Not real big, but it could work. Alright. Uh.